Greenbacks versus vintage 30s. Ooh. Uh, I am a, well, my favorite guitar speaker ever is the G12H30. In terms of what you can still buy today, and it's still, like, you know, not some $400 speaker. The best speaker I ever heard was these 25 waters, but they were 100 years old, and they cost a thousand bucks a piece or something uh g12 h30 my favorite speaker by far i'm talking modern metal vintage classic rock whatever anything through that speaker almost always just sounds good to me and i don't know why but there's something about it that's just awesome next speaker greenback you push a greenback and it will start to complain and uh mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me when i pissed off the old lady a little bit and i like <laughs> and, and y'all could tell she's mad not really like you know uh she's not she's not getting even mad she's just She's just irritated. And uh, when your greenbacks are irritated, it's the same kind of pleasure. Like, yes. Um, they really, when they push them, they do something. That's yeah. the whole Steve I sound. He's got a push greenback. Almost every record I've ever heard of his. Uh, that's a really cool sound. Vintage 30s. Um, there are. I have plugged into them before and, and said, that's more metal. That's more metal than whatever else I had. But there's definitely like a lack of uh, complexity. Like, like in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because we're used to hearing them so much. It seems to be like, you know, like almost all boogie cabinets, 412s or orange 412s, just kind of standard stuff. It's just vintage 30s. It's like I've, I've owned probably five cabs with vintage 30s, and then I, I got a 412 with greenbacks. And just like you said, man, when you push that thing, it, it like growls at your back. It does man. something. Yeah. It, do, it bites a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge vintage 30. And, we say we're used to the sound of vintage 30s. We are if we're, we played on them enough. Yeah. But I don't know what's going on on real records. I don't ever pretend I do. Yeah. But my guess is uh, I have trouble getting that same kind of harmonic content with vintage 30. And I've I've done tests where like I cranked vintage 30s. Uh, I had my 5150 and I cranked it up to 10, and uh, it uh, they never really distorted it in a way that was cool. Uh, I thought it it, it just kind of I just wasn't good. Kind of lost control. <laughs> yeah, and that's really the end of it. Uh, it just, yeah. it just sounded like uh, it. Kind of reminded me of what I would imagine. Solid. You talk about solid state distortion, odd harmonics being bad. Mm. That kind of felt like that bad sound. Um, so it, you get what you get. But of course, when you're playing metal and stuff with lots of gain, and you crank the stuff up, maybe you don't want that added to it. Um, maybe that's just an extra bit of mud. And so I could see why some guys would want that. Same reason they don't want their power sections. Uh, overloading which is you know like rectifiers and 5150s especially you turn the power amp up and they don't really add doesn't add power to distortion not anything yeah. like my marshall or my rivera it just kind of gets loose it gets a little hair loose and that's all you it's all it really changed so um that that whole argument gets really tricky but for the guys that are, are doing the high game business with cranked up speakers and cranked up power sections um it kind of becomes a you know, fundamental part of the sound you have to account for that ahead of time with a preamp so I think a lot of metal guys and hard rock guys were thinking preamp first and then power amp. Power amp adds stuff. Uh-oh. Yuck. And so, you know, you got to be aware.